Hey everybody, welcome to the Mana Burn. This is Steve, and today we're going to be doing a deck tech on Lawan Cephalid Empress. Uh, before we get into that though, I'd like to say please check out the description in the video here to sign up for the Patreon. Uh, we're doing $90 a box uh, shipped and opened on the channel for all Patreons, uh, so sign up for that. We've already got a few people that have bought some boxes, so um, also check out the Discord where we play nightly uh, commander games, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. So without further ado, let's get into the deck tech. So the commander for this deck is going to be Lawan Cephalid Empress. It's three colorless and a blue for a 2-3. And when Lawan comes into play, return all blue creatures your opponents control to their owner's hand. And your opponents can't play blue creature spells. So this is going to be an ultra janky type deck that is just a lot of cards that a lot of people don't play thrown into one. Um, our budget for the deck was 250 bucks. We were, I think we are in the 240 range. So a um, lot of good cards, a lot of good, um, uh, a lot of fun to play in this. Our main, our main way to win this with this deck is going to be swinging it with creatures. Um, it's really just a super control deck. Uh, there's no real one or two piece win con or anything like that. So uh, we'll get through. We have a few mana ramp spells, but not many in this deck. We have our, um, it's, it's a monocolor deck. So we have Thought Vessel, we have Soul Ring, and then we've got Sky Diamond. Uh, Sky Diamond's two colorless tap uh, to bring it in, enters Battlefield Tap, you tap it for blue mana. Um, that's about it for that. Um, then we have our non basic lands that are going to help us. Um, basically look through the deck a little bit and scry things like that so uh when mystic sanctuary enters the battlefield or it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more islands which won't be an issue here and when it enters the battlefield untapped you may uh put an instant or sorcery from your graveyard on top of your uh library then we have castle vantress which comes into play tap unless you control island which again won't be a big deal but you can tap four to scry two and halamar depths this is a great card it enters the battlefield tapped uh, when it enters, you scry three, um, so not bad at all. And uh, I skipped past one here. Oh, and Riptide Laboratory. So this is actually from Onslaught. You tap it for a colorless, or you tap uh, colorless in a blue to return a wizard you control to your hand. So, uh, or to its controller's hand, I should say. So this is going to help you in the long run with a lot of your creatures and things like that. So you'll see as we get through here. Um, now we're going to get into some of the control cards. Uh, I apologize for that. It was supposed to be on pause. All right, so we'll start with Sour of Temptation. It's a flying 2-2 when it enters the battlefield. Gain control of target creature. I apologize. This thing is uh, going and it's not supposed to. Sorry about that. So we should be not, we should be good now. So we have Kaiga the Tide Star. Uh, when it dies, gain control of target creature. It's a flying 5-5. Five five. Now we have Royal Elemental, which is three colorless with three blue for a 3-2 flyer. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may gain control of target creature for as long as you control Royal Elemental. So another good control card. We have Helm of Possession, um, which is two and tap it. You sack a creature. Oh my goodness, there is something really wrong with this. I apologize, everybody. All right, let's start over. Blatant Thievery comes in. Why is it doing this? I've got it paused, but it's still going for some reason. All right, mass manipulation, double X and qu what the heck, man? All right, I apologize. This is not working properly. Let me fix this real quick. Um, oh, I know why. This is a new slide. All right, so we have Memnarch, which is going to help you control creatures. It turns uh, permanents into artifacts, and you can gain control of them. We have Kaiga the Tide Star. When it dies, you gain control of target creature. Um, we have Royal Elemental, which we already went over, which is three colorless and three blue. I would start the video over, guys, but we're already five minutes in, so I'm just going to keep rolling with it. Uh, we have Helm of Possession, which is tap two, tap it, sack a creature, gain control of target creature as long as you control Helm of Possession. Blatant Thievery, which is four colorless and triple blue. For each opponent, gain control of target permanent that player controls. That's awesome, especially in a four-person pod. And then Mass Manipulation, which is double X and quad blue, and gain control of X target creatures and or Planeswalkers. The big thing for this is the Planeswalkers um, and Sour Temptation. So we already went over all those, so that's pretty good. So Next we have Mind Bend. Um, we're going to get into a lot of utility. A lot of these cards are going to be the same, so I'm not going to go over every single one of them. I'll just kind of tell you the name. Um, so 
for mind bend, it's gonna it, it's change the text of target printer by replacing one word one color word with another, or one basic land type with another. So essentially, um, you know, with with Loan, you're gonna be able to say players can't cast red spells, green spells, whatever, whatever the most egregious thing you're going after. Shifting sky. Um, this is great because it's an enchantment. As it comes into play, you choose a color, and all non-land permanents are the chosen color. You can change this with your other permanents, so uh, that the other cards that you have in the in the in coming into play. So, um, again, you can change the text of a color with spectral shift, which is one colorless and a blue for an instant, um, and it's entwine, or you can do both. So you could change uh, target spell. So Spectral Shift is kind of like Slate of Hand, which you'll see later. What this means here, target spell. When you're casting Lawan, you can cast this and change the, um, the color of Lawan. So when you have Lawan come in, it says return all blue creatures. You can change the text here with, those, with um, Spectral Shift and Slate of Mind. Um, so those that's why that's a really good text because you can replace it on the spell itself so that works out really well for you next we have trait doctoring which is one blue it does the same thing um changes the name of a color so uh wrath of merit lodge is three blue blue when it enters the battlefield tap all red creatures red creatures don't untap during their controllers on tap step Again, when it's cast, if you don't have, if you can't change the text on it, the cast, it's always going to say red. But you can then change it to, you can change the second here to white, green, whatever you want. Instead of saying red creatures don't untap during the controls untap step, you could change that. Um, so that's going to be really good. Slide of mind, again, change the text of a permanent by replacing one color of a word. This one you could do upon cast um, as well. Wim of Volrath. Change the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one word or basic land type with another until the end of turn, and you can buy it back for two. So another good one to help you. Alter reality. Change the text of tar target permanent. Again, this doesn't end at the end of turn, so that's another good one. Back to basics. Non-basic lands do not untap during their controllers on tap phases. This is a super control deck. So you're not going to get a lot of love from everybody anyway, so back to basics, might as well be put in there, right? Now you've got Chill, another enchantment, but it says red spells cost two more to play. So pick a color. If everybody's playing, you know, try a three-color deck, but everybody's got white or black or green in common, you could change this to, to fit the bill. Next is going to be Crystal Spray, which is going to be the same. Change the uh, color of a word or basic land type, but at the same time you get to draw a card, so that's super fun. And then you have Douse, another great one. This is going to be a counterspell on a stick, basically. It's uh, three mana to bring out, but then it's going to be colorless and blue. And it says counter target red spell, play this ability as interrupt. Obviously, you can change the red to whatever color you want it to be, which is awesome. And then we have Kiora, Vest the Sea God. Uh, you get an 8-8 token, or it's five and five colors, two blue. Create an 8-8 token with hexproof. Tap all permanents that opponent controls. They don't untap during the next untap step. And gain control of target permanent um, and opponent controls untap it. So this could be anything. A land, a creature, a planeswalker. It's any permanent. So it's awesome card to have in here. Especially in a super controly deck. And then Animantu's Augury. I threw this in here because um, you're going to be able to cast lots of cards from here. You're going to have, you've got a lot of enchantments, instant sorceries. It's a very even deck. Uh, creatures and all that stuff so you're not you you know you should be able to hit a couple at least four or five things and then domineering wheel will sorry it's three colors in a blue target player gains control of up to three target non attacking creatures and until the end of turn untap those creatures they block if able here's the great part about this card somebody swings in at you with whatever five dragons let's say and somebody's playing an angel deck next to you you could take their angels and block because you're taking three non-attacking creatures, so if you know if it's somebody else's turn, and you know you can just take those, you can untap the creatures, block with them, they get killed. Two birds, one stone. Great card. Ishkaron Scepter. This is going to be on here to if you want to be able to copy your instance for changing colors or for counter spells or something like that, you can uh, imprint that. 
uh, ley line of anticipations in here so you can play everything at instant speed. Narset's Reversal. So Narset's Reversal is fun because you can copy a counter spell. You can copy one of your changed color spells and return it to your hand. You can copy a spell somebody else is doing. One of my favorite Narset Reversal moves is somebody's going to cast Torment of Hellfire for 15 and you say, oh, I'll copy it. Or, you know, and th then they have to do the, the 15. Or you um, Exsanguinate. You copy an Exsanguinate and you get to gain life too. So um, just good card. Great card to have. Then we have Glimmer Die, which is again going to change the, the text color or the color text on a card. High Seas, again, is an enchantment. Red creature spells and green creature spells cost one more to play. So the odds are you're going to be playing one of these colors in your pod. So you may only need to change one. Uh, if you need to change both, then you can change both. There's lots of cards in here that let you do that. Now we have Kira, Great Glass Spinner, which is going to be a one blue blue for a 2-2 two, two flyer. And it says creatures you control have whenever this uh, creature becomes the target of a spell or ability for the first time in a turn you counter it so if anybody wants to target any of your creatures they're going to have to target it twice just a great card especially in mono blue um and then mind bend again so now we're going to go through some of the tutors so we have merchant scroll which is going to let you search for a uh, instant you reveal it put it in your hand then shuffle your library we have spell seeker which is going to let you go find an instant or sorcery with cmc two or less and put it in, you reveal it put it in your hand Mystical Tutor, you get to look for an instant of sorcery, uh, reveal that card, shuffle your library, put it on top. Long-term plans, which is going to help you get to, um, which is going to let you get any card that you'd like and shuffle your library, put it third from the top. So if you know that you're having trouble with something, you know, cast this and then get that to the top, uh, get that closer to the top of your deck and then get into your card draw, uh, which you would have here. So you have Blue Sun Zenith, which is X triple blue. Target player draws X cards, and then shuffle Blue Sun Zenith into its library. Frantic Search. Again, draw two cards, then discard two cards, untap three lands. So it's pretty pretty good card there. Mole Drifter. Five mana for a 2-2 two, two flyer. When it enters, you could draw two cards. Or you could pay two colorless and a blue and cast it and sack it whenever it dies. You know, sack it right away, but at least you get the two-card draw. Insight is an enchantment. Whenever one of your opponents plays a green spell, you draw a card. So again, you can change this with red, white, black, blue, whatever you need to so that you can get more card draw. And then Rhystic Study. Whenever an opponent plays a spell, you may draw a card unless they pay one. Uh, we got Brainstorm. Draw three cards and put two cards on top of your library. And then we have Agent of Treachery. So this is kind of one of those uh, uh, Swiss Army knife type of uh, cards here. It's going to be, when it enters the battlefield, you gain control of a permanent, which is great. And at the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. So, as we saw earlier, there's quite a bit of control in here. We have about seven, eight cards that are going to help you gain control of things permanently. Um, and so, it's going to be a really good card to have in the deck, especially whenever you can draw three cards at the end of, uh, uh, at the end of your turn. Um, then we are going to go through our creatures. So, we have Torrential Gearhulk. Which is a 5 6 with flash, and when it enters the battlefield, you can cast an instant or source, or you can cast an instant from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. So, if somebody bounces something uh, of yours and you need to bring it back onto the battlefield, but you need to change the color text, you can go and get one of those cards out of the graveyard. Now, we have Thalicos Deceiver, which is three colorless and a blue for a 1 1 with Shadow. Shadow is great because this creature can block or be blocked by only other creatures with Shadow. Now, Sacrifice Th Thalicos Deceiver, gain control of target creature permanently, and use this ability only if Thalicos was attacking and unblocked. So, as soon as somebody, as soon as you attack, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of games aren't going to have other cards with Shadow, so you're going to be able to kill, uh, sack this, and gain control of whatever you want. Uh, imagine getting like an Ur Dragon or an Atraxa or uh, something brutal like that, that'd be awesome. So we put Tall uh, tall Rand in here, two colorless and two blue for a 2-2. Two, two. But whenever you cast an instant of sorcery, you get a 2-2 two, two flying drake. Uh, there's quite a few instances of sorcery, so I just think it makes sense for it to be in there. Um, now we're going to go through some of the removal. So some of the removal is going to be creatures, as you've seen other creatures in other slides as well, because they do multiple things. So we've got Thada Adele, uh, Inquisitor, which is a colorless and two blue for a 2-2 two, two with Island Walk. 
Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, search that player's library for an artifact card and exile it. They, the, that person shuffles their library. And until the end of turn, you can cast that card. Awesome. Go get somebody's Eldrazi Monument or something. We have Pongify. Destroy a creature. It's own, it uh, can't be regenerated. The controller gets a 3-3 Ape. Uh, Blind Seer. So it's uh, colorless and a blue for a 3-3 legendary creature. You could uh, target spell or permanent. becomes the color of your choice until the end of turn. Rapid Hybridization. Again, destroy a creature. Can't be regenerated. Uh, its controller gets a 3-3. Washout. This is a great card. Return all permanents of the color of your choice to their owner's hand. So basically, you've got four colors to choose from. Unless you're going against a mono blue deck, then you're in a little bit of trouble. Uh, but then that's about it. Now we've got some counter spells. Uh, so Archmage's Charm is going to be triple blue. You can counter a spell, you can draw a couple of cards, or you can gain control of a permanent with converted mana cost one or less. So this is great to steal somebody's mana crypt, soul ring. Um, it's you could draw a couple of cards. It's it's a great card. So I put it with the with the counter spells just you know because that's where I, I think it's a good place for it. Now we have Disallow, which is going to be one color and two blue to counter a target spell. Or an activated ability or triggered ability. So this will help you stop people from going off or going infinite. Uh, counter spell. And then we have Stifle, which again is going to counter an activated or triggered ability. Arcane Denial. It's one in a blue, colorless in a blue. You counter the spell. Uh, its controller may draw two cards at the next turn's upkeep, and you draw a card. And then Rewind. Counter spell. Untap four lands. Um, so pretty good there. And then we have two Planeswalkers. We have Narset, Parter of Veils. This is in here so that you can't, so it says each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. Again, you're trying to control the game, slow the game down. This is going to help you. Minus two her. Look at the top four of your library. You can reveal a non-creature, non-land, and put it in your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library. So this can help you kind of, you know, scry, fish out what you need to get for your win con or to get for your wins. And Teferi Temporal Archmage, now that this card's down to five bucks, um, plus one, look at the top two cards of your library, put one in your hand and the other on the bottom. But the minus one is his main reason, untap four permanents. Uh, and then minus 10, you get an emblem with, you may activate loyalty abilities of planeswalkers you control on any player's turn, anytime you can cast an instant. So this is a great card uh, for the plus or the minus one. The plus one's going to help you kind of, you know, get through your deck a little bit, and the minus one's going to help you untap four permanents. So if you want to swing in and then, you know, swing out, or if you want to untap your Helm of Obedience and then take control of something else. So this is just going to be an overall great card to help you really get through your deck. So, um, again, that's our deck tech on Lawan Cephalid Empress. I'm debating on whether or not I'm going to build this deck and actually play it in real life. I think I probably will. Just because I think it's going to be a really fun, janky deck. Is it going to win all the time? Probably not. But is it going to be a lot of fun? Yes. Is it going to piss a lot of people off? Yes. Do I enjoy that? Yes, I do. Especially in Commander. So, it will be fun. Um, so, again, guys, thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave some comments. Tell me what you think about the deck. Uh, check out the Patreon. Uh, sign up there for some great discounts um, and some great monthly benefits. I think the benefits are probably some of the better ones that are out there. Um, as well as uh, check out the Discord so you could, you know, jump in with games with us uh, on a nightly basis and uh, play against Lawan sometimes. So everybody have a great day and I will see you next time. All right.